Good morning. Well, the cold weather's thinned them out a bit, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you complaining about the weather, my son and daughter-in-law texted me this morning and where they woke up, which is in the uh, hills in Victoria, no, New South Wales, at Jindabyne, was minus seven. So let the complaining finish. <laughs> yeah. But on such a glorious morning, the beautiful sunshine and, and lovely peaceful day, we come together and worship the Lord in his house. So let's do just that. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn. Friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart um, and confess our sins in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord. Then he forgave the guilt of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you that by nature we are sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought, word and deed. Therefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and plead for your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase our knowledge of you and your will, and make us obedient to your word, so that by your grace we may come to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake grants us forgiveness of all our sins. Therefore, upon your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning and is now and will be forevermore. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, you alone are Lord, you alone, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's pray. Lord, you never fail to help and guide those who bring up, you bring up in your love. Lead us always to worship and love your holy name. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have the readings for the day. first reading for today comes to us from Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 9. The Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, your relatives and your father's home and go to a land that I am going to show you. I will give you many descendants and they will become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous so that you will be you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse those who curse you. And though you and through you, I will bless all the nations. When Abraham was 75 years old, he started out from Haran, as the Lord had told him to do, and Lot went with him. Abraham took his wife Sariah, his nephew Lot, and all, the, and all the wealth and all the slaves they had acquired at Haran. And they started out to the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abraham travelled through the land until he came to the sacred tree of Morah, the holy place at Sechem. At that time, the Canaanites were still living in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, this is the country that I am going to give to your descendants. Then Abraham built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, he moved on south to the hill country east of the city of Bethel and set up the camp between Bethel and the west and I on the east. There, was, there also he built an altar and worshipped the Lord. Then he moved on from place to place, going towards the southern part of Canaan. 
This is the word of the Lord. The second reading today comes to us from Romans chapter 4, verses 13 to 25. God's promise is received through faith. When God promised Abraham and his descendants that the world would belong to him, he did so, not because Abraham obeyed the law, but because he believed and was accepted as righteous by God. For if what God promised is to be given to those who obey the law, then faith means nothing, and God's promise is worthless. The law brings down God's anger. But where there is no law, there is no disobeying of the law. And so the purpose was based on faith, in order that the faith that the promise should be guaranteed as God's free gift to all of Abraham's descendants, not just to those who obey the law, but also to those who believe as Abraham did. For Abraham is the spiritual father of us all. As the scripture says, I have made you father of many nations. So the promise is good in the sight of God, in whom Abraham believed, the God who brings the dead to life and those commands and whose commands brings into being what did not exist abraham believed and hoped even when there was no reason for hoping and so became the father of many nations just as the scripture says your dependents will be as many as the stars he was then almost 100 years old but his faith did not weaken when he thought of his body which was already practically dead or for the fact that Sarah could not have children. His faith did not leave him, and he did not doubt God's promise. His faith filled him with power, and he gave praise to God. He was absolutely sure that God would be able to do what he had promised. That is why Abraham, through faith, was accepted as righteous by God. The words, he was accepted as righteous, were not written for him alone. They were written also for us who are to be accepted as righteous, who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from death. Because our sins, he was given over to die, and he was raised to life in order to put us right with God. This is the word of the Lord. Could we stand for the gospel? The third reading of the gospel this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13 and 18 to 26. Jesus left that place, and as he walked along, he saw a tax collector named Matthew sitting in his office. He said to him, follow me. Matthew got up and followed. While Jesus was having a meal in Matthew's house, many tax collectors and other outcasts came and joined Jesus and his disciples at the table. Some Pharisees saw this and asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such people? Jesus heard them and answered, people who are well do not need a doctor, but only those who are sick. Go and find out what is meant by the scripture that says, it is kindness that I want, not animal sacrifices. I have not come to call respectable people, but outcasts. The second part of the reading from verse 18 to 26. The official's daughter and the woman who touched Jesus' cloak. When Jesus was saying this, a Jewish official came to him, knelt down before him and said, my daughter has just died, but come and place your hands on her and she will live. So Jesus got up and followed him and his disciples went along with him. A woman who had suffered from severe bleeding for 12 years came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, 
if only I touch this cloak, I will get well. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, my daughter, your faith has made you well. At that very moment, the woman came, became well. Then Jesus went into the official's house. When he saw the musicians of the funeral, for the funeral, and the people who, st who stirred, all stirred up, he said, Get out, everybody. The little girl is not dead. She is only sleeping. Then he, they all started making fun of him. But as soon as the people had, put, had been put out, Jesus went into the girl's room and took hold of her hand, and she got up. The news about this spread all over that part of the country. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Thanks, Glenroy. And we declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn. I'm just wondering if you could switch the organ off during the message. It's not tinnitus. It's <laughs> the, the, the organ's got a bit of a whistle going. It's whinging about the cold weather. That's what it's doing. Um, that gives us... Huh, uh, th that gives us encouragement, doesn't it? That, uh, that it doesn't hurt to complain a little bit. Just a little bit but not too much. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord 
Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, this morning we have uh, some great readings. All of them would be good to look a little more closely at. Uh, but I got stuck on the first one and, uh, and moved no further. Uh, so we're not going to get into the healing of the daughter or anything like that because it all, this is where it all started with Abraham's call. You know, God speaking into the world, God breaking into our world with Abraham. Um, so I just want to focus on that for a little while, the call of God. I don't know if you've, if you've ever had a close look at that reading, but what it talks about there is Abraham, you know, hears God say to him, go from where you are to somewhere else. Now, that's no big deal for us. You know, if, uh, um, I mean, it would be a big deal if somebody said we had to move from here to USA or something like that. It would be a, a bit of a big deal, but it's all known to us. Right, Abraham, in that ancient world, there was no such thing as you know currency to any large degree or anything like that. You you basically lived and died by your society, your place in the world around you, the relationships that you had built since the day of your birth, and even before that, because your family would have had a relationship in the in the society as well. So everything that you build in your life is based on the people around you. Like, there's no such thing as a bank. So you fed someone when they were hungry, that's money in the bank. Because when you are hungry, you can expect to be fed by them. You lent someone some grain to plant their crop, well, that's money in the bank. Abraham was quite a, a wealthy man. He had uh, uh, servants and stock and um, flocks and, and all of that kind of thing. He was, uh, uh, he was quite a, a bit of a godfather, I suppose. Um, and, uh, and so he was reasonably wealthy. But most of his wealth was tied up in the community around him. The respect for his name, the... Uh, the authority that he carried in the society was most of his wealth. And he gave all that up. He virtually gave up his superannuation. He left it behind and moved away. It must have been something significant. It wasn't just a thought in his head and him saying, well, I think that maybe God leading me to something. No, it was mu far more than that. It was, uh, it was God speaking to him in no uncertain terms. And we're not, we're not told exactly how that happened, but, uh, but it was significant enough for Abraham to leave everything behind and move to an unknown land. Now, he couldn't, he couldn't get on the, the computer and Google where he was going, you know, just to see the pictures and see what's there and book a motel for the... He couldn't do any of that. There was... He had no idea what he was getting himself into. All he knew was that this supernatural being somehow, whom he didn't know properly, he didn't have a Bible that he could, you know, explore the nature of God. He didn't have any of that. And so moved off. This is why... Uh, this is why Paul names him the father of faith. You know, by faith, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Because Abraham just had to take God at his word. And so he, he believed God, he accepted God's call and he moved. Amazing stuff. And it's interesting in the Bible that when anything big happens, there's an intervention by God. You know, there's a, there's a call from God. There's like Pentecost, you know, tongues of fire, whatever they are coming down. Uh, there's, um, 
uh, the burning bush with Moses. Uh, whenever anything big happens, there's a, there's a revelation. It all starts with revelation. God revealing himself, calling to someone, something miraculous happens, and then it all starts. The rescue, the, the new life, the, the new direction, the church. It begins, always begins with revelation. God breaking into our world and speaking to somebody. It's exciting, isn't it? That, that that's the way God operates, that's the way God functions. Um, would you like to receive a call from God? How, how would that go? You know, we, we often think about a call, we often uh, talk about a call. Um, that's the way I got here, is a call. You called me. It was, uh, it's, that's what it's called. It's not called an appointment, it's called a call. It's, it's not called a job interview, it's called a call. Uh, it's not actually... Uh, we use the word even... Um, you know, the, uh, I am called to Gatton, this is my call. I don't, I don't say this is my job or this is my appointment or, or anything like that. It's the language we use. It's a call. Um, so we, we, certainly, we certainly hold the call in high regard and we consider it to be a call from God. You know, that's the, that's the function we have when we have a call meeting for a, uh, for a church church. Um, and it's interesting because when you become a pastor, you don't go to any more call meetings. Uh, so I have to think back to before I was a pastor to, to what happened there. But, um, you know, what happens is, is the congregation gets together and the bishop or one of his representatives stands out the front and talks about, you know, asks you questions of what you want in a pastor and you describe Jesus. And then he gets up a... A list of um, you know potential matches to what you want and and you consider it and and yes there's a bit of decision making there but in the end you consider it to be God's will that you're going to send a letter to this bloke because that's how we discern the will of God for us is we gather together and then we vote it's not it's not democracy, even though it looks like democracy. What we're trying to do is discern the will of God together. And so we call it a call. That's the whole structure of our church. It's designed to listen to the voice of God. Um, and so we have structures and, and methods of trying to do that. Um, It's interesting though that things have changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. You know, there was a time like Abraham received the call, Moses received the call, there'd be one bloke receives the call and then everyone else listens to him. Things changed with Pentecost. I don't know if you realise the massive change that we've moved from from Old Testament times to New Testament times. But what we see now is the Holy Spirit is given to his church. The Holy Spirit is given to um, all you mob, right? And so you all receive the call. You know, that's why we gather together to discern the will of God because God has given his Holy Spirit to the church. You don't just say to me, what does God want us to do? And I'll say, hang on a minute, I'll go over here and find out and then fast for 40 days and come back. Thank God we don't have to do that. I mean, that, you get a bit hungry after. But that's the old, the old way was this one guy would receive a word from the Lord, like Moses would receive a word from the Lord and he would tell it to everybody else. Well, now, with the gift of the Holy Spirit, everybody has access to the voice of God. 
Any one of you can receive a call at any time. Do you realise that? That anyone can receive a call at any time. We have little calls from time to time. You know, not all of them are pack up your family and go to a foreign land. That's, that's sort of the larger end of the, the spectrum of calls. And they're not all, you know, go and join the ministry. That's only one call that we can receive. You know, there, there might be a call such as, why don't you give that person a call, a ring? Um, let's use different language for the phone now. Uh, why don't you give this person a ring because they might be going through some trouble. That's equally a call from God. Why don't you pray for, for this particular person? You know, there might be someone placed on your heart that you suddenly develop a concern about and you think, I wonder how they're going. Well, maybe that's a call from God to pray for that person. You don't need to know what troubles they're going through. You might just, uh, you might never know. Sometimes you might find out, but you might never know. And so you might pray for a person and their life suddenly takes a turn around and things go all right. They just needed some prayer support. You may never know. Any one of us can receive a call from God at any time. Big, little, um, how are they? the different ways that we can receive a call. Uh, Phil, if you want to just uh, click onto the next slide. See, hearing a call from God... Um, okay, maybe I should have chosen a different colour for this, uh, this font here. But anyway, it's, uh, uh, it's reasonably visible. Uh, dreams and visions. That's the, that's the big one. You know, that's uh, you know, God breaking into our world and we receive a dream or a vision about what's going to happen. That's, um, that's pretty much how I received my call to ministry. Uh, I guess I needed a big one because I was quite happy with the way I was living at the time and so needed some, uh, something to indicate that there was going to be a turnaround in the direction of my life. So it came in the form of a, a vision or a dream. Um, an audible voice, uh, probably the rarest kind of call that people get these days but it still happens. Um, you know, it happens from time to time that someone will receive a call from God that's very specific. So uh, it may not be for something big though. It may be a word of comfort uh, like Joy received in, in Thailand when she was there. She heard this voice, you are covered in the blood of Jesus. What a, what a fantastic thing to hear from God. Uh, and she heard it three times. She says it was a male voice. She woke up in the middle of the night. She turned the light on because she thought someone was in her room. or well, somebody was. It was God. But uh, it was so real for her. Uh, it was an audible voice. Uh, what a wonderful thing to experience. And I'm jealous. But anyway, that's, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that she received such a, such a, a voice from God. Uh, fantastic. And she carries that with her now. It's, uh, it's, it's a confidence, it's, a, it's an assurance that God uh, cares for her, loves her, is with her. We can all receive that care. Uh, you don't have to hear the audible voice, but that's... Uh, we, and we can, um, we can benefit from that too. Somebody receives a call, God is with you, God loves you, God cares for you. And so we, we can say for ourselves, okay, if God is willing to actually say that, he didn't need to, We've got all the information in the Bible. God doesn't need to tell us that. But from time to time, he will tell someone. And so we can all go, okay, so God's going to back this up. I can know that I'm loved and cared for. A growing inner awareness. Now, none of these are bigger than the, than the others. You know, we might think, whoa, you know, for some of them. But they are all ways in which God communicates with us. This growing inner awareness that this is what God is leading me into or, th or this is what God would like me to do. It might be as you're sitting in your morning prayer time and you're reading the word and it, 
it just, you know, there's lots of topics in the Bible, but the one topic of, of maybe caring for somebody, uh, you know, feeding the hungry, for example, you, you just have a growing feeling that that's you, that that's your calling, that you need to be doing something about that. And so you start exploring ways in which you can feed the hungry. That's a, equally a call of God. It's just God is speaking to me in a different way. It's a growing inner awareness. Uh, the, the Lutheran confessions ha, are full of, of that language. They, it uses the term inner promptings of the Spirit. Right, inner promptings of the Holy Spirit. So, so that's, and it's probably the most common one. Um, that, that, that people in God's economy experience. It's just that inner prompting. Equally, a call of God. And that's something that didn't happen before the gift of the Holy Spirit, before Pentecost. So, growing inner awareness. Um, through others, the fellowship. That's why the church is so important. That's why it's important we gather together because we can encourage one another. And you may not know it, but as you're encouraging somebody else, you may be speaking a word of calling from God that they hear in a different way than you said it. Um, but, or, you know, you might come up to someone and say, you know, um, I, I think you'd make a good Bible study group leader. You know, and you encourage someone like that. And they might hear it from three or four different people and so they might think, well, I might give that a go. It's a calling from God. Coming through our friends, other people in the church. Um, so it's a common way that God speaks to people. Mind you if, you, if you don't speak to each other and encourage one another and seek ways that, that you could possibly encourage one another, you know, if you think inside your head that guy would be a really good Bible study group leader or that lady would... I'm sure you know she would be a really good Bible study group leader. If you never open your trap and let that out, you know God's going. Oh, how many times have I got to call these people? You know, trying to trying to get the message through, and nobody's saying anything. So we need to encourage one another. When when you feel a, a sense of value in another person, speak it out. They may never have heard it before really important um, so encouraging one another and it may simply be external the final one what God places before you example the Good Samaritan even though he wasn't actually a real person he was just a, a character in a story that Jesus was telling but um, if it were true and those sort of things do happen what God places before you, you know, if you want to do the will of God, have a look at the people before you and see what you can do in their lives. That's a way that God calls us because of what's placed before us. These are ways that God speaks to us, are ways that we can hear a call from God. Um... And it's good to, to ask for guidance. One such call, uh, I must relay to you, the story of our bishop, Queensland District Bishop, when he was considering the call or the, his nomination to bishop. He was assistant bishop at the time and he was starting to think, no, this is something that I don't want to do. And he said to Paul Smith, the bishop at the time, who said, you know, how about you think about stepping up? He said, no, I'm not sure about it. Maybe if I was struck by lightning, I might consider it. Two days later, he was going for a run. He was struck by lightning and ended up in hospital. Two weeks later, he said, yeah, okay. I'll, um, I'll ex accept nomination. 
When you're asking God for guidance, ask for small signs, just a hint, right? <laughs> Don't use struck by lightning as a way that you will or won't follow the call of God, all right? So let's, we can take that as a lesson from our bishop. Mind you, what sort of confidence do you think that gives him in his role as bishop? I think that, I think it's helped. Probably not the struck by lightning, it would be good to do it without that, but I think it's helped him really step up and, and say, I can lead this district because God will be with me. Imagine the confidence that that would give you. But how about you try, Lord, maybe some Vegemite could appear on my toast or something, like something smaller and less impacting. God called Abraham out of his comfortable life. What's God calling you to? What's God calling you to? What's God calling somebody else through you? Um, what's God, how is God speaking to you? Continue to explore that. Continue to listen. And remember, God is willing. It's not that you know, he chooses one person out of a million to speak to. That's how it was in the Old Testament. That's how it was with Abraham. It was one person that was God was going to speak to and work out his will through. That's not the way it is now. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit with us, he speaks to us, he guides us, he leads us. And he will call you to something. Be listening to how God is speaking to you. We can know through him. We can be confident uh, with those five ways. You know, there'll be, there'll be larger ways that God will speak to us, but we have his word that he guides us with and we has, have his people that he speaks and guides us uh, through together. And we can be confident that God will guide us and lead us and he will not let us down. What's God calling you to? May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen. We're going to sing this next song of, of call. It's a, it's a song which calls us.
Heavenly Father, we offer to you what you have first given us. Guide us in all that we have, that we may use it to serve others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God shows his great love to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. So let us pray to our Father with confidence. Gracious Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have given us, although we have not deserved them. Above all, we thank you for your word and sacraments. Keep the gospel pure in your church. Give us faithful pastors to preach your word and help us to understand and believe. Bring to faith those who do not yet know you. Protect your church and have mercy on its enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the nations of the world and their rulers, that your will may be done in all places. Give wisdom to all leaders, so that they act with justice and mercy towards their people. Bring peaceful resolution to all conflicts. We ask your, your mercy in all conflicting situations, especially, Lord, we pray for the Ukraine, that you would bring blessing of peace to that land. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. God of mercy, bless all those who work for peace and care for the vulnerable around the world. We give you thanks for the work of United Nations, the Red Cross, Amnesty International and other international care organisations. We pray especially for the work of our Lutheran agencies, Australian Lutheran World Service and International Mission. Protect their workers and strengthen them in their service. Move us to offer our prayers and support for their efforts. Especially this morning, we pray for Matt Canavan as he brings uh, a uh, proposal to government to protect uh, newborn babies, uh, those who are born alive as a result of a termination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we pray for the homeless children in desperate situations and young people in trouble. In difficult financial times, help us to respond to suffering and need with generosity and compassion. Open our eyes to the hungry and lonely in our communities and help us to share your blessings with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, bring your comfort to all who struggle with ill health. Lord, comfort the grieving, especially those who have uh, recently lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you love us and have promised to hear us. Answer our prayers according to your wisdom and love and bring us closer to you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. Amen. And we sing our final song, Forth in thy name I go.
Just a, just a thought. If I were to start something of a men's ministry kind of a thing, like gathering around a fire and chatting and having a I don't know, hamburger for the evening and then some sort of uh, presentation or guest speaker or whatever, who, who would be interested in a thing like that? Okay, no, all right. Not overly excited, but two or three, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it could happen. Um, what have we got coming up? Yes, uh, midweek services. You'll uh, find that they'll be happening at 5.30. Um, there's also Bring a Friend Sunday is coming up. Hey, how far have we got? That's a fortnight, isn't it? Yeah, two weeks away. So you should already have lined up a friend because that was last week's homework to think of somebody you could bring or if you've got no friends that gave you a week to find a friend, to make a friend, right? Uh, if you haven't done it yet, you're going to have to get friendly and see what you can manage. Um, it's best not to leave it to the last minute to invite someone. You know, now's the time to start inviting and saying, look, in a fortnight's time, we've got to bring a friend Sunday, we're going to have a barbecue, it's going to be good because it was fantastic last time. Uh, so do you want to come along with me? That gives people a chance to work it into their brain that they might even be coming to church. So have a think about that. And remember, this time what we're going to do is we're going to follow up afterwards. And once we've invited them and they've had a wonderful time here and they go away, after a couple of days, you give them a ring and say how did you find it you know what did you think and uh and then maybe invite them to something else all right so um that's that's this week's homework actually we haven't got the slide up for the um uh interdenominational thing have we but it, i better put that back in that's remember that's on the 30th of july uh sunday afternoon we're having this combined service of churches of the lockyer valley uh, we're all meeting here. We're going to meet at 5.30 for a barbecue and then 6.30. Or is it 5 and 6? That's why I should have the slide up there. Um, but uh, anyway, you'll know because you've seen it before and you'll see it again next week. So, uh, but just uh, claim that date. Michael. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Two things. First of all, the backyard citrus fruit is ripening nicely. I don't know about yours, but I've been eating mine for a couple of weeks now. If you haven't decided to eat it all yourself or to make your own marmalade or whatever or give it to family and friends and neighbours, then please think of a newer. Right? A bucket of citrus fruit goes a long way when it comes to making marmalade and jams. They're really looking for grapefruit at the moment, either white or pink grapefruit, but uh, also quamquats and oranges and mandarins and lemons. So if you've got backyard citrus fruit, don't let it drop on the ground, please. If you don't want to pick it or are unable to pick it uh, because of some delicate skin condition, um, Give me a ring and I will come around and pick a, bu a bucket of fruit. I will, not, I will not take the whole tree. I'm not that greedy. Uh, neither is a newer, but just a bucket would be fine. The second thing is um, a French couple that I know of here in the Lockyer Valley are looking for some short-term accommodation, a granny flat, caravan in your backyard or something like that maybe a spare bedroom with a, with a uh, with an ensuite she speaks very good english he speaks very good french between them you should be able to have an interesting conversation they are working they've got plenty of work in front of them i know the farmer that they're working for they seem to be a good clean living upright couple so if you think you uh, would like to broaden your horizons and expand your experiences, please see me after the service and I'll see if we can get the two of you together. Right? French. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'd prefer an English-speaking lady, then uh, um, see Marie. She's still looking for 
uh, some accommodation for a friend of hers uh, who needs accommodation for a year. Yes, and starting roughly at the end of this year, so it's for the, yes, for the yeah, 12 a... months, so the next calendar year, so for a lady there. Yes, good morning everybody from me as well. Just a few things from me. First of all, you will see in the bulletin, um, hopefully you, you people have that, if not there are copies out the front, but you'll see the details about our AGM which we had recently for those who weren't able to make it, and there were a lot of people who um, gave their apology for the day, have a read through that. As part of that, you will see some of the financial sort of issues facing the congregation. You'll also see an advertisement there for reg, uh, regular electronic giving. It is a really good way in this day and age to, to handle the, the financial side of our, our um, work for the church. Um, I've been using that for years and it's fantastic. I just find it so easy and it takes the whole sort of question marks about having to get cash every Sunday morning and whatnot. It's just organised. And if I'm away from church on a Sunday, that's okay. It does the giving for me. It's just fantastic. Have a look at that in there. It's in the bulletin there. Um, and another, uh, the school service is in the, the, uh, directly after this service. Uh, the 10 o'clock service is the year six service. School services are always a highlight of the calendar. If you, yeah, please come along and support the school. Finally, uh, as most of you will know, Robert Evelyn will be retiring next month from his role as CEO of Anua. Uh, Anua has been working to find a replacement for Robert. And we've been interviewing CEOs. We've had some very good candidates. Uh, I'm just giving an announcement that I'm hoping that after the service next week, there will be a short congregational service for us to endorse the appointment of a CEO. Uh, if you actually, you, said, you said service, a, a short congregational meeting. Sorry? You said service, uh, a uh, short, after the service, a short congregational meeting. Yes. 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 After next week's service, yes, yep. there will be a... You said short congregational service. Okay, so, I thought, sorry. I, th I thought, is there well, a there, new liturgy no, for... There will, yeah. be a, there will be another service after the service. We have two services. So, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, there'll be a short congregational meeting after the 8 o'clock service next week so that the people from the second service can come along to hear. So, we will be... Um, that will be next week. Um, through the week, we hope to finalise the process that we will go through. And whereas, you, know, you, you guys will be aware that we, we, the congregation approves the appointments of school principals. We've, we always do that. We haven't had to think about the appointment of a CEO for Anua for 23 years. And it's not uh, overly clear in the Constitution about the congregation's involvement in that. But what we will be doing is following good process and we will come to the congregation for your approval to appoint the CEO mm -hmm. of what will become Peace Lutheran Care as we move forward. So I'm just giving notice of a short meeting after next week's service. Look, um, yeah. Coffee is down the front. I can see the waters boiling. May God bless each and every one of you as you go forward this week to love and to serve the Lord. And there seems to be cake. God bless you. Listen for the voice of God. <laughs>